scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let me, before we briefly touch on what the Lord put in my heart, to bless us with I just want to remind us again and again I will keep doing this as God grants grace as to why we are gathered here week in week out we've been doing this for many years and for those who have been part of the ministry long before Koinonia in fact for many people it, it was every day every week laboring when when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years 15 years you're asking you mean this is how we, i mean nobody questions a student they look at you after 15 years and they say ah where are you now and you say oh finally i just got admission or oh, i'm writing work nobody says till now they say wow congratulations although the time is long but you are paying that price in hope one day they will ask you and you say, oh, sorry to tell you, I got a job five years ago. I'm now the director of the company. And, ah, that little boy writing JSC. Listen, God is going somewhere with you. You can choose to end your dealing with him. That's not going to hell. You will not go to hell. But you have pegged the extent to which God can do business with you. I've told God there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned. I break every limit. Take me as far as you can take me. Stretch me as far as I can be stretched until I can carry an anointing that will bless a generation. Thank God for that which you have done, but this is child's play. In the visions of the Lord, I keep seeing it again that there is more. There is more. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, stretch me. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. I've seen signs and wonders, but this is not enough. I can't take what I have now to the nations. It will make me fight and quarrel. It will create competition. It's not unique enough. It's not distinguished enough. Oh, oh, oh. to be 
very anointed. Jesus himself showed us this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 38 of Acts chapter 10. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen. Then he says he on the strength of that quality of the anointing he went about doing good you cannot do good just out of compassion the problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy there are challenges in the lives of people that need it. you have to move further than comfort you are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing young and old listen to me i'm speaking to you every man of god i know today who is doing mighty things for god who is being thanked and honored by nations they are only thanking the anointing the price to have brought something forth is painful it's not a gift it's a school in the spirit and the semester system does not work like school here one course can take two days to finish another course can take four years to finish you don't have a system with god and say okay after a particular predefined space of time no you can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved it's not backsliding it is the course content is bulky and you must be articulately trained now you can choose to think you are too you are too long and then graduate yourself the door is always open this lecturer does not close the door it is your passion that closes the door in this school of the spirit is students that close the door the holy spirit does not close it is wide open you can choose to walk out and say lord i'm tired please I'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around and then you get angry and criticize others nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the spirit I learn this every day as I have the privilege of studying history studying the moves of God and watching the things that God does through my life let me tell you the anointing is is a commodity of inestimable worth never trivialize it it is the secret of transgenerational relevance you are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives to shift systems then you are a blessing sympathizing with people may help psychologically but it will not prefer solutions any man that trivializes the anointing it's about to waste his time on earth. I tell you the truth. It has nothing to do with ministry. I went for a meeting. You know, something happened. I didn't even tell my people. They watched that happen. We came in this evening from a meeting. I've been ministering in a conference. And as I was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle, probably they are here. I may not know. Two families who came on Friday for Koinonia, trusting God for a miracle of the fruit of the womb. The husbands together with their wives and they were friends. They decided to come and Koinonia didn't hold on Friday. So they now paid the price, went back to Kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning. And when the meeting was done, I think the protocol helped them. I was walking and they came and um, they just looked at me. And compassion filled my heart now whether or not I can solve their problem is another thing and it's wickedness to claim I can solve it when I cannot you see let me tell you something if you love God and you love people you will pay the price for the anointing that is the only way to bless people I'm speaking to someone here here's a family experiencing this kind of challenge they don't need counseling they've heard it they are not daft people i don't have to tell them just go and see doctor so 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 and so i i think they are adults enough they are married and they stood there and i watched the two women 
and watched their dear husband standing and I was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family or brag like we always do as men of God lay hands on them and walk away and let them go back to disappointment and I looked at them years ago I would have been in I would have been in so much um, um, guilt because I knew I really wouldn't do anything about it but as the days have unfolded I have seen the spiritual synergy that this thing is a formula you can produce repeated results in the lives of people I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year this year 2016 I caught it like a key and I said this is it I've gotten it there is a key when you search you will find when you wait for it to come and meet you you will never find it there's a lot of spiritual laziness we hope that God will carry the word and look for you no hospital moves around looking for patients the hospital is built even if you cannot walk they will carry you there there is a, a unit called emergency but you have to get there I see people many times and I see that we're not really passionate enough I'm like a spiritual historian I'm searching what is the secret behind predictable results in this area there must be a hunger and I looked at them and I told the women hold my hands and they held my hands and I knew their wombs were open yeah not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling I knew there is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing at that point you will know that you are a blessing you can see a man 20 years of misery and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you and the moment they see you they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended let me teach you something I'm still going to use money I hope you don't mind um, let me use money watch this I think I've taught it here the anointing is like money there are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce there are results that you are anointed is not enough everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased but every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased watch this I did the teaching this morning similar to this and I want to use that analogy if I have for instance I'm not saying anointing is money but if I have a thousand naira worth of the anointing edge me and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it are you getting the point now so when you come to me I will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result are we together but if thank you if what you need is um, let's say a miracle the equivalence of a phone of 50,000 am I anointed yes but the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that I possess to solve that problem don't just say anointing is anointing you are joking how God anointed Jesus look at the extent that's why he could do good every problem Jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing so there was flawless results I'm telling you this is is a revelation God gave me the reason why some things happen and some don't happen is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it and those that are above it so I can lay hands on you falling down is under this but the miracle you need is above it so you will fall down and yet not have the miracle are you getting what I'm saying now you can come to me say man of God prophesy over my life I lay hands on you and you fall because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit is, 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 the, is a basic dimension of the anointing it does not mean you received anything so when you possess such a dimension of grace such that the major problems of mankind 
is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve at that point you are a living blessing the woman with the issue of blood if she touched peter she would have kept bleeding correct yeah but she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe when you saw jesus you knew that was it if you did not receive from jesus it was not a lapse of power it was your dishonor and lack of discernment do we have such people in zaria do we have such people in nigeria men that you can carry your trouble with joy with joy not with suspicion that the moment you land in koinonia before service starts you are dancing because you said the devil that did not stop me from coming here that's the end of it when people testify i am touched not just by the testimony but i'm humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with god and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges this is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry it's working in me it's working in me it's God's ability God's ability it's working in me it's working in me listen you know you possess an anointing when certain testimonies start repeating themselves when you begin to hear repeated testimonies then you know the same way a woman cooks and before you get to her restaurant psychologically you have tasted the food because you know she's not going to tell you sorry today this year i'm burnt she's left that level that's why they put a price tag on their food you buy rubbish for 200 naira anything you see smoky or not you manage it because you know what you paid for but when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal listen what will make men leave their nation and come to you are you that important because you think your name is joshua selman are you that important that a man can let me tell you something most people say people are busy nobody is busy everybody is looking for solution if you become what they are running around looking for i promise you you can hold koinonia every day by 10 30 to 3 a.m in the morning notice the time 10 30 to 3 a.m men will still come and you'll be wondering are you not a government worker again and they will say the last person you prophesy to his salary for 30 years came to him in one year why should i want to labor like that you are not a blessing when you are not anointed i'm telling you this learn it understand this speak grammar speak hebrew words speak greek do anything you want to do if you cannot reveal christ he said great is the mystery of godliness christ is come in the flesh the word becoming flesh that men and women can carry their results a man comes here not loving god and hearing you speak something infects him he goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again look how long it takes people in the body of christ to adjust to spiritual things they get born again in january no passion in the atmosphere they got born again it's in november they now consider being filled with the holy spirit oh no there's no fire there there is a way you can step into an anointing huh the lifespan of your journey is one week in one week it will look like you've been born again for 10 years because of the impact of the grace you came under i made a vow to myself i said i will never go to a ministry twice to reveal christ there yeah. twice no no that you invite me and say come again it's like pushing a wall let's keep pushing uh -uh. I prepare my spirit that if God grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area then you know something dramatic will happen can men come to you are you that valuable I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit I watch people trivialize the anointing and then somehow they think the key 
is just to receive laying on of hands. Oh man of God, I came with a seed of one million. Just lay hands on me. And then you go to another one, lay hands on me. And it's as if you are shopping for anointing. And then you bring it and say, now I have what it takes. You are joking. You are really joking. You believe spiritual things are that cheap? I came to challenge you. There is where God is taking you to. Don't, don't, don't rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. 4.69, you get 4.69. If it's cheap, try it. Go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same result. And then you see that it's not so easy. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When Benihim came to Nigeria two weeks ago, look at the rush, look at the preparation. Literally, he kept the body of Christ at a standstill. Is it true that everything he shared, you have never had it? Will you be honest to say you have never had it? Is it true that what he taught you has never been heard? He has repeated it in many churches. He has taught series on it. So why seek him? Why crowd yourself outside in overflows? Why sit down and stream? Why cancel your programs? You didn't bring a man. You brought a grace. You brought an anointing. You brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around now foolish people say what is there about them no no when you honor a man you don't honor a body you honor sacrifice you honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded god space to move through that vessel in a mighty way listen listen look up let me tell you something come david dam let's assume david dam has let's assume that he has um high blood pressure or HIV watch this don't you think God wants to heal him on Wednesday don't you think God wants to heal him next year the desire of God to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give God space to release that dimension of his possibility when that vessel appears his healing has come why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes is it that that's the day God wanted to heal them? That's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in. There are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres. Just like that. But they never started that way. I shared a verse of scripture that I would want to share with us. The Lord, thank you David. The Lord gave me an instruction to repeat a few portions of what I shared in the meeting today with us and it will bless you Luke 1 80 please Luke chapter 1 verse 80 Luke chapter 1 verse 80 this was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference and I want to establish it again and then we will pray Luke chapter 1 media please help us I want us to pray tonight Luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. Yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding but the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit where men can lead their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher and the child John the Baptist grew he was ordained a prophet from prophecy but he was born a child and the child grew when I found this scripture I jumped 
I said so men can grow once upon a time I was not here I grew meaning there are levels I should get to that I'm not yet there I can grow growth is a secret growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities I can grow and the child John grew to become a prophet and the child naive barren of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit no prophetic acumen and the child grew men can grow I'm not hearing God now you can grow I'm not anointed now I can grow my company is nothing to write home about it can grow my marriage is nothing to write home about it can grow my home is full of children who are disturbing they will grow growth is a mystery that when you understand you know there is hope and the child grew and eni that little ministry that was meeting on the floor grew to what it is now and koinonia is growing 10 years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today as excited as we are about today we will nod and say that's david dam and they say who that guy is shaking the nations and david dam grew ah look at mama and look at femi promise these guys are just shaking nations in different territories and you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down and they and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman grew. men can grow into the anointing men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit the challenge is not where you are the challenge is do you want there was a day this guy when he joined the worship team he could not play keyboard like this he challenged himself his music director and his leaders challenged him and he decided to grow now when i learned how to play keyboard i don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard i began to play keyboard 1994 94 95 but i refused to grow so although it's that long where i stopped in the growth is still where i am today you can be born again for donkey years but the peg you gave god is still where he will faithfully stand and wait for you you can be ministry and the highest miracle you will ever see is headache because that's where you stopped the moment you got to that level of your anointing you graduated yourself awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself but there are those who even at phd they say we are still undergraduates lord we are staying with you when i hear men like benny Hinn saying i still want more of his anointing i say my god more of what after shaking nations yet some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance oh i prophesied to sister so 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 it came to pass you think that's what you are going to use to shift nations you are joking and the child i want to show you that men don't just happen and work strong in spirit but the system is this he was in the desert he was in the place of training for David, it was the cave of Adulam. Listen, please hear me. I taught in the conference where we went to on the coming revival. And I mean, I think some of you need to get our external ministration. Sometimes I wish that I carry all of you along. And uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings, very epochal teachings. And I taught yesterday on what we call the travail, the mystery of seasons, the mystery of the dealing of God in a man's life that brings the anointing the anointing does not come just because you want it the anointing is like a certificate that is given to you at the end of a season of being dealt with god and i want to share just a few parts of it and then we'll pray i want us to pray i'll just spend a few minutes and then we'll pray tonight 
Fill me up Till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over Fill me up Till I overflow Hallelujah. Please sit down. When a believer, listen to me, let me teach you. Let me show you how people grow and become matured in the spirit. Men do not become matured in the spirit just by going to church. There is a step there. But there is a system. Listen to me, please. God's system of working with men. There are seasons of your life. Watch this when you will pass through what we call the travail jesus said something very interesting john chapter 16 please give it to us quickly media john chapter 16 verse 21 jesus was teaching on the ministry of the holy spirit and he said something that is very interesting if you're a christian and it's projected and you can see it please i want you to read it one to read why stop this is strange i said it yesterday and i want to repeat it here some travails are because your time has come it's not because you are out of alignment with god's system jesus is teaching a woman comes to a point in her life where she's in travail the travail is not because she hated god the travail is because her time has come many immature believers will say ah the travel is a sign that she's missing out on god somewhere the bible says because her hour is come do you know there are things that happen to people's lives simply because seasons have come not because you are out of sync with god seasons have come follow me but as soon as she's delivered of the child the reason for her travel not a child the child the very object for which the sorrow came the bible says she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world but until then there is a contention please listen to me many pastors have tried to preach what i'm telling you away to tell believers nothing like that happens i i I love the body of Christ but brothers and sisters I tell you this by the authority of the grace of Christ given to me I know how men become anointed don't sit down and allow people just fool you into thinking one day an extreme dimension of the anointing will come you are really joking there is a system and the caption of that system is called the travail I will tell you why these seasons come they must come you never pray them away you only pray for grace to pass through them the praying and saying they should not come is saying i do not want to enter that realm i don't care who you are i don't care how you love god jesus went through a season where he said father if it be thy will if it's possible let's renegotiate how this thing will happen but he quickly remembered and said nevertheless not my will but your will be done Abraham waited 25 solid years embarrassingly painful his servants had children and he did not have any do you know what it means to respect a man who does not have results while you the subordinate has it that's what Abraham went through he didn't just go through barrenness he went through the shame and the pain yet he waited
is in the system of God and is how he builds men and brings them into authentic power. The generals of faith walked that way. Our generation is running away from it. And we keep bragging and prophesying in arrogance. We are going to do more than Smith Wigglesworth. You go and read their history and you will see a track record. There is not one of them I know that escaped this. Not one. Not one of them. There is a season of travail because your hour is come. How many people want to start ministry without going through this? And they crash land and make a fool out of themselves. There is what qualifies you to host God. There is what qualifies you to be a dispenser of the possibilities of God to nations. One of it is this. The mystery of the travail. Seasons that stretch your spiritual life from border to border. Seasons that stretch every part of your conviction. Mm. Someone is getting blessed. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. I want to run. One more time. Fill me up. Fill me up. Shabarato Kasalabarabarabar. Let me tell you the benefit of the dealings of God. The first advantage of the dealings of God is that the dealings of God with a man produces alignment. It produces yieldedness and it produces a track record in the spirit. Never forget this. The dealings of God, the spirit of man cannot align to God by default. That destiny must come under a system that will compel alignment. A system. In ancient times, they had a way they made the anointing oil. Right? The olive oil. They would take the olive plants and put them on something that looks like a threshing floor and put a heavy object upon it. And someone will hold it and begin to turn it clockwise. And the pressure mounted on that olive begins to squeeze out the oil. The oil will drip out together with particles, impurities. But the man for the joy of the oil will not even mind the cry. Let me tell you, God loves you too much to let your tears deceive him. Don't think he plans to end that season. You must drink that cup in full. I know what I'm saying does not look pleasant i show you the path to glory there is a relationship between death and glory there is a relationship between death and glory you will never be able to access glory without death verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies no you don't just speak to nations and doors open i'm in christ you are joking you are really joking that ignorance is a sign that there's something you have not even seen because scripture is prophetic you need the holy ghost holy men were moved by the spirit so only the holy spirit can interpret what he wrote there are three reasons why we go through seasons of travail let me give it to us quickly number one The seasons of travail in a man's life, listen, they, they, are, they create experiences that give you a personal revelation of who God is. The first advantage of seasons of travail is a personal revelation of who God is. Personal revelation. There's too much theoretical knowledge about God in the body of Christ so many people they know the god that this person said people come to sing special numbers are you clapping for my jesus is that what you give my god a foreign and a strange incense rising you must go through seasons the first advantage of the seasons of travail 
is they break out every sense of falsehood and theory and help you know who God is for yourself no longer the God of Joshua Selman you encounter him every name that God was named was an experience a season introduced that dimension of him what is the name you have given God based on your experience if you were asked to never call God by any name in the Bible has your experience given him a name that you can relate with you call him the name of another man's experience show me a name like a Jimmy can have a secret name for hope hope can have a secret name for a Jimmy Aaron can have a secret name for his wife I want you to show me a name that your experience with God has brought that only you can call someone else does not understand but two of you know I'll show you why many people do not have convictions in the body of Christ they know the God of another person they do not know him for themselves God's ultimate desire is not only that men will introduce him to you but that they serve as ushers a time must come you must have a track record and say I know him I know whom I have believed I know Job 42 from verse 5 to 8 Job was rich. He talked about God. He was a God-fearing man. He gave sacrifices. But the time came in the life of Job. He could not explain the predicaments in his life. Everything went haywire. His entire life crashed. And in the end, this is what Job said. Read it please. One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes have seen you. I heard Joshua Selman when he was talking about you. I heard him say you can heal the sick. I said amen. But now that they told me I am SS, I need to know the healer now. Now that they told me that I, I am barren, I tried everything. I went to every man of God. They did their best. Lord, I locked the door, me and you show me something about your glory. Church history is full of men who had encounters when they closed the door at everything and say Lord show me something I'm tired of hearing the God of someone else and an explanation I cannot relate with show me the song that has come out of your experience with God worshipers you have been singing Kotka's song you've been singing Thai Tribet's song show me a song that came out of your tears you thought you will not make the next day and he gave you a song every time you are in a challenge that song comes it may not minister to others but it's your song it's not a song for congregation it's a song for your secret place a song that reminds you of who god is let me tell you you know why people certain people in the body of christ become unshakable and immovable it's not because they are blind it's not because they are not human they have an experience with God that is higher than every other thing. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now I have had an encounter with you. Job summoned God in chapter 38 and said, God, you need to come and reveal yourself to me. And when God showed up, God said, Job, I've been hearing you talk since chapter 1. I've just been keeping quiet. You've been making a lot of noise like you know me. Now let me talk to you. Where were you when I founded the earth? When I laid the foundations? When the morning stars sang? And Job said, my God, I was never taught that there is such a thing. He said, declare if you have understanding. There are healing evangelists who stepped into the level of creative miracles when they sat down and prayed Kenneth E. Hagin he was the guinea pig to his healing ministry dying of a deformity and nobody could heal him I told you about my story I've had fungal infection that ate my head they said hair will not grow on my head again I know what oppression looks like when I'm laying hands on people that memory sponsors the release of the anointing there is something that sponsors compassion. It's not just because I'm kind-hearted. No. no. When you stand and you see someone's legs eaten by worms and is smelling, you are attempting to go, but you remember an experience. Ha! Fill me up. 
Till I overflow I want to run I want to run Fill me up Related to students, have you seen, have you seen a final year student advising a new student who is just entering? He will tell you, "Sorry, sir, they gave me a course. I'm trying to do change of department, and the boy cannot sleep. And the final year student is laughing because to that guy is a mount. He, he's having a mountain. Can they change my course? Uh, can they do this? Sorry, sir, how do they do it in ABU? You and you laugh. I say, my brother, there's more to come. You better relax. You have not seen the guy in the department you are going to. And then she enters the office of the man, and for the first time in her life. A man would blast and insult her. He said, you are stupid. If you think you're a prostitute, I'm not for you. Go out. <sighs> and she leaves. Never had she been insulted like that. Then you find out others who live in that realm. Every day they insulted them till they submitted their project. It's called growth. And the child grew. No matter how you sympathize with that boy, leave him. Sometimes don't pity people too much to cover seasons that will afford them opportunity to grow. There, there is sometimes you can go through so much pain, you want to over pamper people, and in doing it, you don't give them the opportunity to know God. Leave them alone. Every day you are giving him two, two hundred naira. One day tell him, Look, I've done my best for you. Go and find out. And he would think we'll call him later you say abba i know sam sam will call me he can't allow me to die like this i saw him cooking yam and then you, the holy spirit will tell you don't call him by nine o'clock he will start browsing the secret of prosperity enter now something is happening to him don't stop it pressure leads people to the anointing When a man starts a ministry, he will criticize every man of God. What is there with crowd? Wait and see. It's just because we need a venue. When he has a venue and for two years, he will first deny. Then later he will look at it and say, well, there may be something. After three years, he will be the first to sit down in the pastor's conference. When they say, I prophesy open door, he will be on his knees before the prophecy comes. Pressure brought him to an encounter. There are people who are too stubborn. Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh did not have an experience with God. He only knew the God of the Hebrews. One day God said, I will reveal to you who I am. Moses, let me use you as a tool. Go and show this man. And he said, ah, is he just parting the Red Sea? They left him face to face. When he killed his child, he said, I did it. Me, God, let your witches bring him back to life. And all the gods of Egypt could not do it. And he said, the God of Moses, he is Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You need an experience with God that will give you the audacity to move through life. We chicken out too much and we look at life strange as if it's because you have not gone through. I want you, wherever you drill your experiences, go and gather them this night. Create a basket in the spirit. Call it my testimony and call it my ladder. To the place of the anointing store it back i know a and b happened to you that was not favorable but the bible says for we know those who have not gone through it do not know but us we know that all things all things all things all things there are things i've gone through in my life that make me look at mountains like mold hills i tell you I don't even pray about them what for it's a waste of time i already have worked with god enough to know that there is a way out i don't have to disturb him some prayers are a symbol of faith and faithlessness and ignorance is because you do not understand the systems of god a track record that track record produces strength and stamina proverbs 24 verse 10 if you fall in the day of battle it says your strength is small i see a lot of believers who do not have stamina 
you you see how malleable they are everything bends them under pressure to explain everything to everybody no it's not like that it's not like i'm a bad person who cares there is a system you go with god that you are governed by posterity conscience and the fear of god any other person can go places I look at the body of Christ and there's too much pressure to defend our ego. Let, let them not say it's me that carried this, you know. See, everybody watch. Uh -uh. Let them think what they want to think. You have gone through a lot with God to know that honor is a mantle. It's not just what you fight for. If it's not on your life, no matter how innocent you are, you will not be honorable. Do you have that track record? Please, I'm telling you this so that when you go back home, you will kneel down and thank God for what made you cry yesterday. Something that brought tears out of your eyes has now opened you up to enough room to know God. Listen, listen. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have just told you sorry. But what I'm saying is so true. It's the foundation for authentic power. Are we together? every time they talk of blessing you you think of your uncle you think you have faith you really don't have faith then one day your uncle leaves you and says from today uh you are a man how old did you say you are you say psalm 23 i'm, I'm still a child he says no you're a man from today you fend for yourself for one month you will see that there's no result meaning somebody's result was covering you corporate success can be dangerous because you can hide under it thinking you are making it worship team is doing well are you doing well you many people hide under corporate success we are anointed i know we are men of god i know life will separate you and demand from you you have to prove that you are intrinsically valuable and the key is to pass through these seasons before i continue i want you to pray one minute from your heart and say lord the let the seasons come i only ask for grace i'm no longer afraid i've been running away from it and fast forwarding my breakthrough but lord i summon courage uh -uh. if it is hunger let me go through it till i catch the key for wealth i'm tired of begging up and down lord let these seasons bring me to the anointing. I know. I know. Oh. The Bible says after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. Are you praying, Koinonia? Shabbat Lord, let them come. They may be painful. But I open up my spirit. And I receive the voice of God through those experiences. They may be embarrassing. But Lord, I need an encounter. I need to know you for myself. Are you praying? I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now I know that challenges do not kill. I had men say it, but I know now. Hallelujah. Listen, this is what makes your sermons powerful because you are speaking from a depth of conviction. When you preach from pain, you don't preach and you are looking whether you are right or wrong. Ah, I hope this thing I'm saying, that's theory. You went to do browsing, copy and paste. But when you are preaching your life and your pain, blood is dripping from your life that testifies that you know what you are saying. You are not advising people, you are telling them the way out. Whether they believe or not is their cup of tea. Men of conviction are men who have pain. They have scars that are, let me tell you, a scarless man is an anoint is, is, is a man who is barren of the anointing your scar is where the anointing is rubbed on it's not rubbed where there is no scar the place of scar is the point of application the 
balm in Gilead is not applied to a place where there is no wound that anointing when Ambrobas hit someone and the Samaritan man came he rubbed oil on the places of the wounds everywhere that he did not have wound there was no need for anointing don't rub your pain there is glory coming out there don't rub your financial struggles there is an unction coming up there don't rub your barrenness let me tell you let all the naysayers preach you will find them after koinonia they will still tell you i'm talking nonsense to you you will still hear them but you continue you are going through it for them the day they will need your miracle by then you will be anointed enough to help them listen there were people who said things about me many years they never saw my face they do not even know me many years later they would come to meet me hearing about joshua selman they never knew never knew and now they saw me and compassionately like joseph ministering to his brother i would minister to them while i was going through what would give me the anointing to help them the devil was using them to criticize and talk but god said keep moving just set your face like a flint sometimes silence is the way to speak silence is the only way to speak in certain seasons i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart tonight you catch the key i'm sharing with you you catch an unction that will change your life you are two people conscious it has stopped you from entering your what will they say there is a way you go through something i say let them say the trouser is torn no problem you, you have gone this this trying to live your life for people you just tell yourself it's over i'm done with it i i i know my redeemer lives if it does not bless me let me die but doing it just for my reputation is over i'm tired of trying to just be nice for people and experience so you want to worship god and you're watching that guy i like is looking at me maybe my clothes will roll maybe they will see my inner wears there is a way you go through fire and not believe you will come out before they raise the song you will lie down as if you are sleeping and start rolling on the ground roll like a mad person and people will say ah, ah david why are you rolling this way and he say, i'm rolling to the god i'm dancing to the god who took the kingdom i never knew i would be a king god took me now you just inherited joy i'll be your son's daughter you don't know what happened between me and your father god took an anointing from your father and brought it to me fill me up till i overflow i want to run i want to run fill me up everyone here you need a personal experience with God listen I speak especially for the men you cannot live a lifetime of conviction without encounters you will bend to your convictions left right and center because the devil will throw everything at you you must have a story in your life that you can tell your children and say in 1971 I thought I would be eaten by this disease, but I'm standing strong. Satan, where were you in 1971? If I didn't die then, I would not die now. We have boastful confessions in the body of Christ without an experience that sponsors our conviction. Oh, if my ministry does not grow in one year, let it be that I'm not called of God. And you are there ranting and speaking nonsense. The key is not English. The key is not Rema. The key is a track record. When blood drips from you, then the oil comes through it. The anointing is for the place of pain. I'm speaking to someone here. anointing is for the place of pain no scars no anointing no scars 
no grace no scars no testimony no scars no unction that's how it works you can preach another message to yourself but i tell you if it is power you look for i show you the way it comes a track record the cave of adulam seasons of pain seasons of travail as soon as zion travails as soon as she begins the contractions that comes to a woman is not a sign that she's a stupid woman it will make her uncomfortable she will get up and be walking around when she goes to the hospital they will make her do exercise she will do stupid things her husband will be there she will act as if she's out of her sense a baby is coming when that baby comes so come visit us everywhere for the sake of the baby you are gathered here today because somebody did not allow this training to pass you are gathered here today because there is blood dripping from someone's altar we who will gather in your own meeting because of the price you are paying you think it will happen something for nothing is witchcraft you are joking there is a track record with all the greed in you with all the pride and the self-centeredness you want the anointing no sir you will pass through that furnace i guarantee you i guarantee you while you are crying god will only supply grace he will not take you out but if you can walk and finally step out at the other end you will be a vessel unto honor it is at that point you will think a thing and God will do it. You have not prayed. You are thinking, God, I think I need, I need 50,000. Someone says, God said I should give you. It's a realm. You don't claim it. You qualify for it. There are things I've, I'm seeing in my life now. I wanted them many years, but I did not know that the track record had not created room for them. God kept telling me forget about these things just keep walking with me today I wonder I didn't even know when they came the track record. oh Lord make me a kingdom financier and then God tells you to sew all your clothes and everything and then people pity you you feel like an idiot you work so hard and God tells you to give it away and God said, you say, but God, why are you not doing it for someone else? I thought you said you wanted the wealth mantle. You think it's just about wearing designers? You are joking. There is a fullness of affliction. You make others rich and remain poor. A season comes, God will say, the season is full. Your cup is full and your heavens are open. And men say, where is this coming from? It's a mystery. See, these are the men you talk about them you bring curses on yourself believe me when i tell you this thing there are men you speak about them literally god will, they don't curse you their covenant the blood that has come out from their life is still on an altar it, it has a throne in heaven this is what produces miracles these things you are seeing this is not by faith it's a covenant god vows to back you as far as this is concerned so you can go to the nations you don't need to ask them whether they believe God in the church you just need to go you carry your altar you carry your covenant and then you bless the world do you have an encounter with God do you know him not Jesus of Nazareth do you know him do you know him I cried for a revelation of him not just a vision of Jesus an experience so when I say God is a good God something in me should be able to explain it when I say God is a deliverer I should be able to say how many are they that rise up against me many are they which say where is his help I should be able to say but thou O Lord art a shield for me you're my glory my glory not just koinonia's glory my glory i know you can lift my head i went through hell men said bury him but you brought me out that was david for you david was a man who knew god 
you see why he knew God he went through more pains than any king he went through more disappointment to an extent that God said you will not build me a temple he would have been offended he said God I know you too much I know you too much to complain I will gather the money for my son speaking to you too many believers who don't know God we brag around thinking because we have little anointings here and there brother you need a track record that blood you are running away from must come out no it must come out if it came out of the son of God it must come out of his body the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows I show you a virgin path that many people may never follow they don't like it they like the anointing they like the charismatism they like the influence but they do not like the track record A man can get to a level where if he prophesies to you and it's a mistake God will make that mistake come to pass because there is a covenant he has tied his integrity to so they can just look at you and say be blessed you have entered the creative dimension of your work with God where you don't just reveal things you create them it's a realm I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart not many men of God will teach you this thing I'm telling you because many people consider it to be the hallmark of their ministry it's like a man coming to tell you bedroom secrets between you and the wife no sensible married man will just carry anybody outside and come and tell you bedroom secrets what I'm telling you now is the mystery responsible for any great man most men of God I understand why they create a system and never share it I don't think it's pride they value the blood that drips from them it takes love for you to hear what I'm teaching you and you must love God to appreciate it just like there are some of you looking and say wow this is very interesting look if I were you I would stop rushing my life I really will stay with God see if you seek him you will find him we are not seeking him we are seeking things around him when fasting is still a problem you are seeking him you are joking God will say separate yourself two days I want to talk with you ah oh God I beg please you are there I bind that spirit and I'm not talking of some hilarious things after tonight's meeting you say I'm going 60 days all that is religion because it's not directed you will only starve yourself for nothing number two this will be probably one of the greatest messages you would have heard in this 2016 if you walk with what I'm teaching you you will command results in a way that will scare you believe me remember I gave us a scripture that is a verse of comfort and the child grieved. so you don't have to sit down and think some people were born like that nobody was born like that and Jesus grew John grew so you can grow Benny Hinn grew Kenneth Copeland grew you must grow you will not just become you will grow number two the second advantage of seasons of travail in our lives the second advantage is that it imparts upon your life understanding understanding a comprehension of the secrets of God listen there are secrets in God that only when you are the lowest point of your life you will see them there are things God has shared with me today I will no I, well let me not say no mortal man there is nobody that may ever get to hear it. you will not even believe it there are secrets that until you get to a level with God if it does not show even you yourself will not believe it listen we take truths from faith to faith there are mysteries that surround this kingdom that control results and power 
when you are there with God it affords him the opportunity to show you certain deep things that when you were high there you would not have believed but now that you are there you will hear understanding the comprehension of the secrets of God the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord right the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenant look at me <laughs> read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation I promise you I promise you there are things you will never see pain is a key in the spirit there are doors that only pain can open believe me brothers and sisters believe me on this there are times you go through seasons in your life when you go through those seasons in your life then certain scriptures open up the Lord is my shield and my salvation who shall I be afraid of the Lord is the strength of my life of whom and it now makes sense ah I now see better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere I rather be a doorkeeper all of a sudden it will be as if you have written books but now you are seeing things there are things I've seen this year that I literally had to stop and I started crying. I said, my God. There are things I said by the Spirit in Koinonia teachings that not even me had come into the fullness of the comprehension of it. I have looked at them. Ah, Psalm 54 verse 7. For he had delivered me out of all trouble and my eye had seen his desire on my enemies do you have an experience that can explain that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side none shall harm you only will you stand and see have you seen that That's why the name of Jesus doesn't make any, any impact for many people. We shout Jesus like a champ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. It's not in English. That name reacts to something. See, let me tell you. There are men that are deeply respected in the realm of the spirit. Satan knows what makes him respect men. It's not English. When you see a man walking in this realm of the spirit, full of scars, blood dripping down as a symbol of his sacrifice to communicate his desire to let the multifaceted dimensions of God be hosted in him. They are the kinds that he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. They are the kinds that are unkillable. They will match a charm and pass. Even the charm knows it will not work. It's not try. Maybe I, I'm, I'm trying to make the charm work. No, no. It's a realm. That is the realm where they can look and say, no sickness can touch me. You know, we mock ourselves in the body of Christ. Oh, I, I mean, I, I can't be sick. And we're just joking. Do you know at what level in the spirit that word becomes activated in your life? every prophecy have, has levels just like in our environment there, there are certain conditions for certain things to happen don't just speak because you saw it in the Bible are we together and so there are so many men of God today they carry their hands lay it on sick people and say I'm anointed and after five years they carry the diseases on the people not by airborne disease the mystery of transference because they do not know that you must truly sustain a higher potential the bible says lay hands suddenly on no man lest thou be a partaker just by laying hands you can partake
listen in your walk with God there are secrets God will show you they are not for public consumption they are not doctrines they are secrets he reveals to you to guide the delivery of the grace he has put upon you it will mislead people when these secrets become public not necessarily because they are demonic but it is a unique dealing of God to you William Branham had a secret with God where his angel will appear when he saw that angel in a healing meeting it was a sign to him that the prophetic mantle was activated then he will begin to heal and prophesy now if you sit down and walk like that you will get into witchcraft something else will appear to you are we together now because that was a unique dealing a portion for Kenneth E. Hagin it is in the secret place as you walk with God you begin to learn certain anointings he will train you with certain sensations just for you to know what kind of anointing is in the building now you can't write a book on it you will bring people into error he will show you when the healing anointing is there he will use your body parts as keys to symbolize to you you will your your organs of interaction with the spirit will be heightened they are personalized dealings with the spirit so when you come for a meeting you stand near someone you can know that there is witchcraft at work not just because you saw a spirit a code was given to you in the secret place and God says whenever you have this sensation is the presence of a demon spirit for someone else that sensation can mean breakthrough is coming it's like jam questions you see how they mix them your question one is someone's question ten that's how it is in the spirit he may you may feel heat in your hand and say it's healing anointing no it is your secret place that gives you your own question paper and God tells you for you this experience means breakthrough is coming oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. to people sometimes you see me laying hands on people and sometimes I can just stand there are there are things your body becomes a superconductor of his glory you can feel the impulses of God's desire he can move in any way he wants with you but we never remain in the secret place until we get that depth of understanding I don't just mean understanding of quoting scriptures the secret meaning to truths in scripture you can stay with God and the moment you see someone coming you know that this man will destroy me it's, you didn't have a vision there is a dealing with God there is an impulse you know that this car is going to have accident I will come out it's not just out of fear hi why have I been feeling like a cow no 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 no, no. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about a sensation you get up and you can know my elder sister is in trouble you were trained in the secret place i show you mysteries now, physically you just see men doing things but i wish your eyes would be open in the spirit they are like robots wires from eternity connected to different parts of them that communicate several impulses of the spirit that's how sometimes i can know the exact point where the holy ghost will touch someone I can stop my preaching and as I'm opening my mouth the anointing is touching the person it's a training it's not guessing you try doing it it's not guessing that level of precision comes in the secret when he visits you he tells you this is a key to this One of the things you will get still on point two is he will now reveal to you the unique role you have to play in his end time agenda. No, 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 no. You have to get to that point where God now tells you, look, David, damn, come. 
I have passed you through seasons and then he tells you David Dam, this was what it was all about you are going to take the worship the healing power of God through worship to the nations that is your mandate downloaded it's not just the issue of talent alone it's the issue of the seasons in your life bringing you to a place where he now gives you the blueprint and he says David Dam, you will be a mistrial you will speak my purposes to nations and while he's downloading it you are dear tiny you but an experience has qualified you for a mantle something comes on your life you may not even realize when it came all of a sudden you will find out that you go for a meeting and all of a sudden you are worshiping and the prophetic starts manifesting dramatic results and healings all of a sudden someone calls you and says sorry we're in UK we just listen to your album we are ready to pay for everything you have been fasting for open door you even try to join a site that will help to facilitate your travel the door was not open in the spirit now it has been opened the nations will call you i want to show you how men rise in the spirit when you rush physically whereas the door is closed in the spirit you will frustrate yourself and go around and come back to the same point your unique role as you are seated here looking at me can you stand up right now and say apostle i know what my role is in god's end time agenda i'm an intercessor my experiences with god has revealed this to me that he has called me to through the ministry of intercession birth the purposes of god in the lives of men and nations have you found it i was in Kano preaching at a pfn um, conference a few months ago a Jimmy, I met a woman for the first time in my life who finishes her Bible every month she said sometimes in 11 days she finishes by word of knowledge I called her out even me I don't finish my Bible like that read your Bible and finish in a month you know how hard it is to read these things that's to tell you it's not an ordinary book you have finished books more for luminous than this but what is it about this that you cannot just finish it's not a storybook when the spirit of god comes upon it there is a lot here there is a reaction to your spirit that will force you to not rush it there is a level of building you must have with god to be able to read your bible and finish it this woman finishes her bible every month without fail it's something i've not done i don't know if there's any man i, I may be wrong but i don't know who finishes your bible every month cover to cover then start again but here is a quiet woman it's a track record with god you will be surprised something happened to her life maybe her child died maybe she lost her job and she said lord since nothing is working in my life let me pick my bible all of a sudden she stumbled across the mantle of her destiny and now this woman is an intercessor when i saw her i was almost saying ma i can pay your house rent if need be to just include me to be part of your prayer point i have met a few women a few women maybe i think there, there should be one here one mama they believe that part of their life's assignment is to pray for me constantly then that is the greatest gift you can give me you can buy me a car you can buy me a house those things are mundane but to have men and women when i'm when i'm i'm just moving around traveling by air whatever i'm sleeping somebody's awake constantly touching heavens for me it's a mystery but there are men like that there are others who are financial apostles they are the ones who will fund God's end time agenda there are ladies here your prophetic destiny is tied to your marriage that's why God is so strict with you other women can marry anybody but for you you are like Esther so because of that there are certain things that must happen in your life God will not allow certain things to happen you will be saying God but why me he says because Esther must marry a Ahasuerus for Israel to be free and so it will not just be anyhow oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh.
must learn this everything about your life can be connected to prophecy but these seasons will reveal them to you every man that tries to ask you out he just leaves it may not all be demonic it's because you have been separated there is a mantle on you you have been separated you may not know but i say it again esther must marry a hazardous so that israel will be free it's not about marriage and children the bible does not discuss the children of ahasuerus and esther it's not necessary haman is a beast that wants to destroy the the israel of god and it will take an esther so god will separate you other people may be moving god will say for you stay here oh god where are you going with me the secret place will reveal it so that you stop judging everything as delay oh god i'm going through delay in my life all my colleagues are married do you not see what is upon you do you not see that there is a mantle and that's what controls the things that happen around your life while you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and say lord what is my role in your end time agenda make it clear please pray Please pray. Shabatakata. Lande Kretos Kalaba. Why do you visit me in the night with songs of worship? Where are you going with this melody, so God? Is it just to watch an album or is there more? Where am I going with these songs of worship? What is the meaning of all these visions? You wake me up in the night. I can't sleep sound. You are showing me things. To what end, oh God? Where are you driving my destiny to? Why am I so passionate about finances? Is it just to prosper? Or is there more? Is there a mantle upon my life that must release a resource for God's end time agenda? I thought it was all about business. I thought it was all about wealth. But could there be that there is a prophetic anointing upon it? Show me my role. Why have you given me influence? Why do I meet great men everywhere I go to? Why do men of influence want to talk to me? Is there an anointing upon my life? Is there a mantle that will be used in this end time? Why have you given me unusual influence? Why have you given me access? Why am I so compassionate? Could there be a prophetic explanation? The third advantage, we're rounding up. When all is said and done, you get to the place of the anointing. That was what it was all about. Listen to me. The pain is a journey. The pain is not an end. The pain is a door leading you somewhere. Finally, you get to that place where all is prepared your body has been prepared now to carry grace your marriage has been prepared to fulfill god's agenda you get to a point where god tells you all the relocation was all about the anointing all the activity was all about the anointing you've been a graduate for 15 years no job it was all about the anointing all about the anointing I seek an agenda that is bigger than your needs thank you for aligning yourself it was painful but now that you have gotten here then you will encounter grace the ancient mystery that came upon ordinary men and turned them into signs and wonders 
that is not just an ordinary impartation of falling down and standing up your spirit is now programmed to begin to host possibilities possibilities that is the realm where your voice becomes like the voice of God you speak and it rattles the foundations of men's destiny it's not about oratory there is an authorization that comes upon your life on the strength of this sacrifice listen to me there are two dimensions of receiving impartation the first is a direct impartation from God because there are certain anointings that are new and your secret place will be the first to introduce that possibility of God so there is no physical vessel carrying it to release it to the earth you will be the first to enter a covenant with God that will reveal that possibility listen please look at me not every mantle that should be on earth is already on earth not every mantle that should be on earth was recorded here in the Bible there are mantles that are still yet to come there are graces that are still yet to come the gift of the spirit is not nine only nine were revealed there are many more there are many more expressions of the spirit seeking for men let me tell you it is important you understand this there are many other possibilities of God the anointing is like rain it moves from Asia to Africa seeking for vessels that are worthy enough for its landing and it doesn't find any and it goes to the continent may Africa keep it because there are certain graces there are things God has been wanting to do on earth but the anointing moves like a plane not finding a place to land the same way demon spirits go around restless that's how the, the certain dimensions of God's mantle are restless they are looking for bodies bodies a body has thou prepared for me when you go through this season then it comes oh for when it comes upon you then you will begin to manifest things that you will never believe possibilities you will change things that's when you can look at someone's jump score and say what did you get he says 141 and you say i change it he goes to check and sees 276 no 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 at that level they are not clapping for a man of god you have represented a system that brings the possibilities of God to people. I'm showing you how to be a blessing. It's not just by giving people sewing machine. You must carry an anointing. God keeps telling me every time, son, if you will give me more room, there is still so much I can do with you. You know, sometimes when he says these things, I just start weeping because I just sit down and say, my God, so there is more. There is more. There are challenges that some of you may have that we have not yet accessed the level of grace to reveal Christ to you in that dimension. We can choose to camp around this mediocrity or still press and say there is more. When people act as if they have arrived, I am shocked. So a direct encounter. In Exodus chapter 4, Moses had a direct encounter. His mantle came directly from God. No one had done what he was about to do. And so God had to give him the impartation directly. But the second dimension is impartation through the ministry of men. We are not strange to this understanding. I've taught it here and there. And I've taught you that men are systems in the realm of the spirit. They are not just human beings. They represent systems. Let me reiterate what I said in one of the meetings. Watch this. I told you that spiritual growth is through relationship. Hear me. But kingdom advancement is through covenant. If you did not understand it that time, maybe you have grown enough to get it now. Let me repeat it. I said that our work with God spiritual growth is based on relationship but the advancement of the kingdom God's end time agenda is based on covenant and the second law is that God reveals himself dimensionally he reveals portions of himself 
and commits portions of himself to people but the system with which he brings that about is that when god intends to reveal himself in a way he must find a man when he finds a man listen he enters a personal covenant not old testament not new testament a personal covenant with that man and that covenant with that man becomes his authorization for revealing that dimension of him to that dispensation nobody in that dispensation will encounter that dimension of christ ignoring what that individual represents you must pass through him or a tribe that is connected to him for you to enter that dimension so when you look at the healing ministry on earth today for instance you trace it down to different men of god it finally lands on benihi he is the living system that represents god's healing power to the nations today and until benihi goes to be with the lord no matter how anointed you are you will still make reference to his covenant with god that represents that territorial dimension of healing are you getting the point now the word of faith you go down to people like david Ibiome, you know bishop oyedeko and it lands finally on kenneth copeland he is the living system that represents the communication of god's ministry of faith on earth but there are much more there are other possibilities god wants to reveal he has not yet found a man who can align to reveal that possibility because the heavy persecution that will come on that man for being the first to introduce that dimension listen let me tell you no it's not something i say in the open. when you understand this mystery then you will know the reason why you must be prepared to carry the anointing the anointing will bring certain grave grave levels of hostility in your life that if you are not built by God you will die men who introduced all of the movements we know in the body of Christ some of them it was until they died many years after they had died other people who were the fruits of their mantle stumbled across their books and they said my God 50 years ago this man wrote this now he is dead do you know there are many things Kenneth E. Hagin wrote and many of the generals is now the church is understanding them. We read them and even edited them. But now we are seeing that ah, this is it. Many years ago, John G. Lake said, you know, the casting out of devils also produces manifestations. They insulted him and they said manifestations are only impartations. John Lake knew what he was seeing. He was describing a dimension of the deliverance ministry that was not yet known but right now it is like the last 10 years that that ministry just started coming to africa but they were men with the eyes of the eagle they had seen it do you know there are many things some of you here you go back to your notebooks and read messages you listened to in 2001 that's when you will scream and say do you mean i was under this anointing and i did not recognize it see if you want to move more than having an anointing to becoming a spiritual system it's not a very attractive life your entire life is a lonely one the the course of life that everyone follows you may never have the privilege to enjoy it there are certain men on earth today who carry an anointing called a kingmaker anointing I never knew there was such an anointing until God taught me let me tell you the price for carrying a kingmaker anointing you will never enjoy what the anointing carries through you but you will make others have it there are men like that their churches will never be large yet they will produce the largest churches on earth their crusades may never have signs and wonders but they will transfer the deepest miracle working anointing is a kind of anointing if you don't know it you will say they don't have the results you are looking for be careful there are dimensions it's a kind of grace paul said so then death works in us paul was never married in his lifetime but he taught married people how to live that's the kingmaker anointing it brings
brings you into a realm that the person himself does not have the privilege to ever enjoy it like the woman who spoke to me a woman who probably had never held hundred thousand of her money but she said my son forever walk upon gold that's a king it will be many years in my life working with God I will now realize that so this is what was released that mama never knew she carried it only God knows where she is on earth now maybe she's seated as we are talking right now she's trusting God to raise 200 naira for her but she has produced a wonder through the anointing in her life there are men you ignore they carry things they are not authorized to benefit from it but they will give it to you Ah, there are mysteries in this kingdom there are mysteries in this kingdom so a woman who never had a good home never had a good home but there is a mantle upon her when she blesses your marriage that pain is what authorized that anointing to walk in her life so you can see all her children haywire seven children they are all touts and you say this woman must be irresponsible but she may be the greatest prayer warrior you ever know there is a woman who lost her husband her marriage failed when she was 20 called Anna the prophetess for 64 years she was in the temple interceding you would think what kind of prophetess are you that you could not solve your problem that was a kingmaker anointing when Jesus was born he said my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel now Lord let me go to rest all I was waiting for I may not experience his ministry in my lifetime but my job was to bring him here we're going to pray brothers and sisters it's time for us to move to the next level spiritually the anointing is what we need to bring the love of Jesus to nations how God anointed Jesus Jesus said the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me doctors you need the anointing of the spirit if you treat patients with what you were taught alone you will watch many patients die in your hands you need more than injection and and, and stethoscope you need a grace businessmen if all you think you want to do is real estate and make money and do all of this you are going to be in trouble because there are forces you need the anointing you need the anointing to marry you need love to marry foolishly and anyhow but you need the anointing for your marriage to strike a chord for Esther to marry a Hazarus so that Israel will be saved Esther needed an anointing not just beauty there was a kind of ointment she rubbed on herself for one year before she became married. You will need more than reading if your education is to bring the glory of God. You can read to get 4.69 but you need more than that. God will ask you to vow a vow and say for as long as I live I will use my certificate to bless you. And you say yes you will answer two questions and still get an a because it was never about your effort you have a deal with God so the covenant from that sacrifice has kicked into you a man who vowed to fail you and his life will go haywire in one week not because you are so prayerful he's the keeper of his covenant This was part of what I preached in the conference and the Lord said I should bring it home and speak to us again brothers and sisters the time you carry the anointing that can solve men's problems truly you have earned the right to be a blessing stop sympathizing with people you have done it too much press 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 like the woman with the issue of blood let them say whatever they want to say but can you press through the crowd and carry something authentic so you thank God for not allowing you start ministry yet you would have just been like any other man 
little signs and wonders 12 members today 20 tomorrow 5 next tomorrow then you now join the bandwagon of critics who are frustrated by they are not pressing listen stop trying to change things around you something on you is what will change everything around you stop trying to change things around you something on you something on you something on you favor will not come just because you know all the people favor will come because there is something on you that will call them are we together five minutes you are going to play worship for us I don't know whether you want to lie down whether you want to cry but for the next five minutes I'm leaving you and God alone I want you to flock it in a time of intense prayer and intercession if I see you choking and looking at me I'll come and hold your hands you are going to cry to God and say my life my destiny Lord the unction for my destiny you are alone I'm going to be crying to God too so it's a moment of intercession five minutes give us worship play and everybody just cry to God
to see what he will make out of your mind. The anointing does not just come. There is a generation that is at the mercy of men and women, ladies, gentlemen. Our children are at the mercy of our alignment. Please, you must understand this. Every lady, every woman of God here, listen to me your children you are the ones who will carry them for nine months men don't carry children do you know what it means for a woman to carry a baby for nine months you can transfer everything required if you are anointed if you are anointed if you are anointed please all through this week let your prayer be use me use me it's a prayer we used to pray before but many people in the body of christ don't pray it again use me they just say i know that i'm used i was born for a reason arrogant rubbish talk use me a desperate cry from a vessel that wants to be used lord and god i know you can do without Can you pray that prayer in one minute before we round up? Use me. Use me. Please pray from your heart. Use me. For your glory, for your power, Direction. That's what I hear. God is giving men direction. It's like an anointing. It will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now is coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down Geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost. Direction. 
somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you it's coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the Lord is saying take it out Lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as I'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation I pull it out this is a miracle service I pull it out now oh yes release that lady I see it in the spirit release that lady right now release that lady's destiny something is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now 
that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are alright let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly Augustina Augustina I'm hearing the name like Augustina Augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you are five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, He gave His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. 
He says, for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? Until the resurrection of man, he was the only begotten. Please listen. You see, everything about this Bible was pointing to this very revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything. The book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of a formula or a principle. So the law, the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No, preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me, this family or minister. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person, his sacrifice and his government. That's the first step. And then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles. Only when you do that are you said to have repented. Many people have not repented. They want to repent. They think they have repented. They hope they are repenting. The first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ. He said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And this is what the apostle said. Repent. For the remission of your sins. So the Bible says, he gave his only begotten son. You laid aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now, today, in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. 
he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of christ a life that is crucified with christ are we together now and then the bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now you're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron. kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and i'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me 
and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still would not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed 
So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, have brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him, I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible say a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you, but I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. 
So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ is an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen. My peace is because of him. So at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength. Because the moment I lean on my own strength, the judgment of the law catches up with me. The only basis for vindication is to be in him. This is what he said. He says, he that abides in me and I abide in him. He said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father... A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. 
you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card 
something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it. You look at it. But you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not, not they have not, they know not, neither will they understand. He said, they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like mere men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker 
of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy jesus christ has done everything he needs to do but i have a role to play nobody gets saved just because jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh -huh. the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think 
God's life and all its content, Zoe, the life of God, that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging, I'm not under any curse, I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath, for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No. Let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom. So that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in Delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always... A participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation 
if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith. You believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up. Your faith. He calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looked for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna, and built it excellently it's about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking God, this my this I've been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, If I spare not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. 
Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So, listen. Jesus said, Father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything? Too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, Oh, God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, That's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen. If it took God refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it listen don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying
the part. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on me. He's able. Listen. Listen. The second prayer point, I already sense the anointing of the spirit. I'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight. Listen, please. Just follow these instructions. I told you your response is where your faith is. There are things that should go. Don't just keep quiet and watch them. The Bible says speak to the mountain. Open your mouth and begin to mention them. Don't keep quiet. Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Say after me tonight in the name of Jesus the faith of God is at work in me I have the faith to receive I have the faith to believe I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this he says they saw a man who had been there and he, he he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms peter and john and he, he said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony 
that God has given us eternal life. He said, and that life is in his son. He says, he who has the son has that life. Please, we're out of time. We have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, I have heard your word. I have been struggling with this thing. But tonight, I truly want to dedicate everything, my all to Jesus Christ. Or you are saying, man of God, I have come out for an altar call before. But for some reason, honestly, the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord. I'm tired of where I am. Those two categories of people, inside and outside, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now. God bless you. Quickly, please, I'll count just one to five. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit down thinking about it. Make your way very quickly. One. Two. Run, run like there's fire on the mountain. Especially those outside. Please, you need to run. Run to Jesus. As you stand here, please keep talking to him. Don't just stand looking at me. God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running, come running, come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the Lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others God is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy 
you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as I pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters Jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of Jesus say after me Lord Jesus from the depth of your heart say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you and this night I surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions I surrender it to you I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation the old has gone I begin a new journey Satan you no longer have any accusation against me I pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good Friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what Jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah I pray for you I declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses I don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of Jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us I'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah I like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say Lord my time for visitation is here I won't give up no I won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of... I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming I I don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me God answers prayers here God gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said Lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her John leave her whatever she wants you to just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a God that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if I were you I'll begin to prophesy over my request and say I wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs> Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life 
I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind, I was saying, Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses. Their dentitions are still exact. They don't use crutches. They are working firm. One of them was a senior apostle that died last year, 132, serving in the ministry. Alive and doing well. When I saw those obituaries, I said there must be a grace for longevity. There, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity. And I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in Ekiti. And we're going back to the north. But we discern that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, appreciated all the people. We were on our way going back to the car and I felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women. I went back to thank them and I saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that I said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and I saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees and we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how I, as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, mean, I was just looking, I was looking to empty everything I had. I said, what kind of grace is this? We went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen 
if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around here i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba baba kata altars 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 right now 
in the name of the Lord Jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the Lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout Jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies Jakatarata, mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodding. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. 
the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray Shekete pres kate para da bala da ba. Shopra tosko to pras kabara ta paria da ba. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Death ears open. Destiny is moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shekete Kappa, Sheke Rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work. Beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you
please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a mantle the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god 
we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.